Hello, everybody. Hello, Krobe. Hey. Randall, Judy, Sal. Hi. I just dropped the link to the agenda. If y'all wouldn't mind signing in, that'd be great. We'll give another minute or so for folks to join and we'll get started. Eric, there's David. Good morning. Good morning. There's a link to the agenda. We're all signing in. We'll get started in just another minute or so. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Are you in a submarine? No, I have uh, some sort of problem with my headphone microphone, which is not good because I live on it. But so I am on backup mode here. There are some days when technology is almost not worth it. Oh, it's not that bad. It's just device broke, need fix. <laughs> cool. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, thank you all for joining. Welcome to what's gonna be the, the best subgroup of the education SIG. Taking a page from Krobe's book. Uh, we are here to talk about section one, create and curate content uh, around the OSSF education stream. Uh, the intent here, as I think we're all aware, is to take the information that we reviewed from the original mobilization plan, uh, refined it a bit and divided up into three different groups. We're responsible for the content in group one. Uh, I foresee us overlapping in some areas. Some of the other groups will handle that uh, when, when the time is right. Um, but uh, I think everybody here is, is knows each other. We've all been on the education SIG and, and the best practices work group. So that's, that's good. Um, if anyone new joins us, we'll of course invite them to introduce themselves. Um, as we go through the agenda document, I mean, if, if you all wouldn't mind helping describe uh, if there's a point that you want to make or a comment that you want to make sure you get in there. Uh, I will try and get it as close as possible, but feel free to go in and, and fix my uh, poor dictation skills um, as we go through here. And if anyone has anything they'd like to add to the agenda, please go ahead and add it there to, uh, to the bottom of the list. I just put this together for some thoughts I thought that we'd want to cover in our first meeting, figure out how I want to approach this, how the team would prefer to work through the items. But uh, you know, this is, this is a collaborative effort. So if you guys have anything that you would like to add to the agenda or talk about, please absolutely do so. Any questions or comments before we get rolling? Cool. 
All right. Hello, Brian. Hey there. Let me repaste the link to the agenda one, one last time here. We're just getting started. Brian, are, are you new to the uh, education SIG? <clears throat> Not entirely. I think I was on a call last week. Uh, I pop in when I can. No worries. Um, we just got started. Um, again, we were, we're responsible for going through section one of the uh, education SIG mobilization stream plan. It's a lot of words uh, around collecting and curating content. So I got a couple of links there for the fourth bullet. Uh, that's a link to the repo, uh, as well as the original Google Doc that we were using for taking notes. So moving forward, we want all of our changes to happen inside the Git repo. So we have um, a history of, of what changes were made uh, and everyone has visibility as to what has been adjusted, added or removed. Um, let me see, Judy, do you have a question? Or is that a comment? Oh, thank you. Cool. Did I have my hand up? I'm sorry. I just saw your comment pop up on the sheet. Just wanted to ah, sure. sorry. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Works. Just the exist. So I'm just highlighting the existing material doc. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so the big question is we've got uh, we've got this repo. We've got, I think, it's reopened. We've got 10 goals on here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think. One of the first steps that we should do is go through and validate that we believe all of these goals uh, are, are appropriate for this team to be working on. Uh, if there's something that doesn't necessarily fit under our umbrella, we can talk with the other teams. But I'm very curious and would like feedback from everybody. How, how would you prefer to work through this uh, information? I, I, I brainstormed a couple things and threw them out here for us to do, but I'm, I'm interested in, in feedback from the group on how we should approach this. Well, I think let's highline those goals. Um, but then I think by the end of today, like uh, let's get this as action oriented as possible. So let's get out of idea phase by like 20 minutes into the call. <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense. Anyone else? David, I need access to the document. You access the document. Yeah, say, I was gonna say the same. Really? Hey, Krobe. It's telling me anyone with a link should have edit access. Any ideas? Give me let a few. Us, I'll work on that in the back end. Yeah. Let so us, let Brian, us try I ran over wait, that. Having a bottle. Which doc are we talking about? The G doc. Yeah, yeah I, I also just sent a request for it. All right. Give me a few, and I'll get that worked on the back end. And we're talking about the agenda doc, correct? No, no, the one that's linked in the agenda. That's uh, okay. List okay, the, the one that was linked to of the, the list, I just changed its permissions. Got it. Thank you, David. Yep, I can see it now. Thank you. Okay, Great. I appreciate that. All right, well, let's go ahead and start by going through the goals that we have. All right, I'm going to share and, my screen. Go and ahead. my only point of commentary to help steer the group a bit is I would like to transform each of the goals, as Sal mentioned, into an action oriented statement, kind of a crisp few words, and then we can move the longer verbiage into an explanation and context. Mm -hmm. So we don't lose that with goodness. All right, let's see how this works. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. All right. Excellent. So we'll start off at the top, work our way down, make sure that we understand what the goal in the goal's intent is and that it belongs in this group. Uh, additional comments, please feel free to, to make them or note them in the agenda. So number one, review the existing educational materials for gaps and opportunities. Before training can be expanded, materials should be collected and, and collected to understand what is available and what gaps exist in current artifacts so that new materials can be created to fill those gaps or desired new areas. This sounds pretty slam dunk to me. Any uh, questions or comments about this one? Go ahead. 
I guess what one, one quick comment is, uh, you know, review uh, is a very vague word. Uh, I mean, you can you can do a lot of review in depth. I would suggest start with at least trying to identify them with the URL, maybe grab the abstract. If you want to give a couple of comments, that's great. But uh, at least, you know, a, a little material better than we'll do, do the deep analysis and never get to it. Mm. Cool. Well, that might be a good like action for each of these. So we'll come mm -hmm. out of these knowing exactly what we need to pull into them. But we've got some links in there already, not in the GitHub yet. Right. And indeed, that Google Doc is really uh, rough, but it's a start. Yeah, it'll get transposed. All right. So goal number one. Goal number one, I'm, I'm seeing some thumbs up, some good anything else. Okay. Moving on to goal two. Yeah. Create an open educational resource library of secure development practices. After materials have been collected and reviewed, a location to stage and publish these items to learners will need to be created. This will require some type of web accessible portal and backend storage that can store various types of learning materials, such as documents, presentations, webinars, et cetera. Thoughts or comments? Yeah, so I guess the immediate action out of this is actually identifying possibly what top three platforms we actually want to pursue. Um, we've got two options here. I mean, LF training and certification is obviously one that we should be using, and that's our free portal. Um, but uh, does anyone else have any immediate recommendations? I have to admit that wasn't my first thought when I read this. Uh, I read this as create a web page with a bunch of links to this information. Okay. And some of those links might lead off to LF uh, training and certification, but. Okay. I think the original intention was like a portal, some type of destination where we could have links or docs. Yeah. We can transform this into whatever the team desires. That is true. I wouldn't be surprised if what this re results in depends a lot on the previous goal we just talked about. I, I was I was going to say maybe part of number one, uh, 1.1 1 .1 should be to inventory while we review what the what other people have. Because I know SKF has a lot. I think that's a good uh, a good action to go along with number one. And for the record, I am part of the SKF team. But we'll, we'll talk so, anyway. <laughs> well, what I heard is that they're he's volunteering to make sure we have a good update inventory from SKF. Oh, oh, oh! I like that one even better. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant. You read my mind. <laughs> awesome. Well, it, 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 uh, all kidding aside, uh, th you know, first of all, thank thank for being here, and uh, you know, absolutely, you know, absolutely uh, looking at you know wait, ways to make things happen is great. Right on. Yeah. Thanks, Randall. All right. So, high level goal one dot two. I think we're, we're good with this one for the moment. Looks good. Moving on to 1.3. As I multitask with my shared screen. Focus not just on development skills and techniques, but also associated skills modern developers need, such as access controls, testing and validation, how to build, deploy, maintain software in DevSecOps scenarios, and training for managers of developers or whom oversee open source as well as web API, infra, CI, CD, desktop applications, and mobile. I would love to reword that a little bit to make it a little less clunky. I guess question for the group. If you look at 1.4, where we're refining the training areas of focus, does 1.3 make sense as a sub bullet of 1.4? Uh, I think it might. Okay. 
you know, we, we can potentially make that a, a task that as we are looking at the personas, we also want to make sure we're highlighting things like uh, DevSecOps and maintenance and other testing and whatnot as well. Our curriculum. I, I, curve, I think I mean, in, in some sense, I think that modifies one, one and one, two. Uh, how so? Basically, well, the, the collection of what already exists, I, I, I think this one three really is a modifier of both one one and one two. It, it definitely adds to the scope of the inventory and identification. Right. Should, should these be almost like separate things, like focusing on education for the code you're writing? you know, classic development, and then another focus uh, of education for, so you're managing a DevOps team or a DevOps pipeline, how do you need to think about the problem? I, I That is an area that I personally feel like is not well understood. <laughs> yeah, and we've pointed out several times, you wanna speak to managers and development managers. Right. right. Yeah. That, that feels like two different courses if I was sitting down creating a catalog, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're the DevOps tooling manager, you don't need to how to really worry about null pointer types of, you know, uh, coding mistakes. You need to be thinking about the supply chain and managing dependencies and yada, yada. I think, I think there's like an operational side and like a developer side, really. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I'm I'm teasing out here. Yeah. There's a DevOps, a dev, a dev side and an ops side of DevOps. <laughs> well, it, it's the ops part of the DevOps machine, not the ops of the software being written, right? So it's who's providing the who's providing the factory that is the DevOps process. The central tooling team often is what they're called, or sometimes now they're called developer experience teams. They kind of own you know, GitHub and Jenkins and, you know, right. every other piece, including in, increasingly including application security, uh, centralized tools. Well, everything old is new again. We, we used to call them software engineering environments, and later we called them uh, <laughs> integrated development in, uh, environments. And, uh, and, and, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah th those, those people, right? How do you design cool. an efficient I, I'm sorry? factory? To, to do this, which where the DevOps is the thing riding on the conveyor belts kind of thing, right? Yeah, somebody's got to maintain the conveyor belt. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder so, if we try to increase the scope to include all those things, we might get stuck. If we're able to to, to separate them out a bit, it might help focus the, the scope of each of the different deliverables. I'm okay with a wider scope for the group, but I agree that we better focus to start with, uh, or we try to do everything and we end up doing nothing. Yeah. Yes. I do think that training for managers is something we can do in a shorter time, in part because yeah. that a lot I would, of that. I'm sorry. Would I? Sorry, what I really want to prioritize here is uh, the managers of softwares, the trainers, and the contributor maintainers. Those two, I think we can really handle under this milestone. We have a whole section for scholarships that I think we can really be working on with the trade schools, job training kind of angle. Um, but I think that those two things should be really highest priority for education right now. So what was the second one? It was managers and... It's these last two, it's managers of software and the contributor maintainer training for compliance. Anyone else have thoughts on that? Judy and then Eric had their hands up. Uh, thank you, Rocco. Judy? Um, yeah, just two things um, about, first of all, the goal of creating um, the content, how to focus what kind of content we're looking for. And my idea was I was wondering, would it be suitable because of the discussion that we've just had in collecting content, dividing it into 
the SCL. So different content for development, different for verification, testing and so forth, different for maintenance. The other thing is maybe creating a matrix of who that content is suitable for. Um, so as Sal just mentioned, if it's a manager, then it's phase three or phase four, or if it's a developer, it's phase three, phase four, <laughs> tester or whomever, um, open source software maintainer, whomever. It's just so we understand what content is for who, who's our target, and try and focus how can we collect the correct content for those people. Does that make sense? <laughs> Uh, I think Eric has hand up next. Yeah, just looking at 1.3, right, after the DevOps scenarios, all the training related stuff, 1.4 is all about training focus areas. So moving that down makes more sense to me. I'm having a separate component for that. Uh, understand what the actual skills and techniques are and what the information that people need to be trained on in, in 1.3 and then define you know, how we separate those areas of focus for developing managers or, uh, or developers or you know, what other other staff and how it gets, uh, how it potentially gets disseminated. So one is the, the material, one is the, how that material is separated based on personas. So it seems redundant to have it in both. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Sal, have your hand up. Yeah. So the way that I've been doing this that works really well um, is separating like this matrix that you can do. There's a couple of great examples, but one that works really well is having a matrix that says vaguely the audience type, but more importantly, you've got three frameworks. You see the context, the solution, and the developer tooling for each column of training that needs to be done. And this allows sort of for those different personas, sometimes they do need to jump into the tooling and sometimes they need to jump back into the context. Um, so if you have those, it makes it very easy for someone to self-identify where they need to dive deeper. And it makes sure entirely that we've got an educational pipeline that fills those little gaps because that's really the problem. People don't know exactly where to go for the level of information they want. Thank you, Sal. All right, so I think we have a couple of good ideas for how to organize the information here. I, I, I'd like to go back to the original question of uh, essentially combining one three and one four and have one three be a sub bullet of one four. So one four is defining our training areas of focus. Do, do we all agree that both of those goals uh, have overlap and would probably make sense to have one goal with um, some of the specifics as tasks underneath it. Yeah, makes sense. So anyone dissent? Let me, let me ask that. All right, so we will combine 1.3 under 1.4. In doing so, do we need to adjust what 1.4 is saying? Do it, it, we just have a goal there. We don't have an explanation at the moment. I, I, I think that's all part of the discussion and implementing the goal. So you don't need yeah. to do that now. Okay. In that case, I'll move on to 1.5 which is create a core of qualified trainers to deliver this courseware. I have a question as to whether or not this belongs in this group. We are, we are um, called the Collect and Curate Content Group. I don't know if this might better fit under, I think maybe it was section two, Crow, help me out here. I think it was section two that was more focused on executing on the training. Yeah, section two will be responsible for developing the training predominantly trying to find avenues to deliver it. Yeah, that sounds like uh, dump it to the other group. <laughs> well, I was going to say a little more, a little nicer than that, David, but, <laughs> but this is going to be, so I will make sure that this is discussed tonight though, because I've got, I really do have opinions on this and how to do this right. I want to make sure that these are, we just need to make sure that each of these sort of training developers 
is like an 80 20 split over different languages. I think that's going to make sure that we've got the best content and it makes sure that we have a no bus problem so that they can co develop some of their demos. Um, cool, but I will cover that tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Sal. And please let us know uh, what, what comes of that conversation. And uh, I guess we can verify that we can either remove this from our list and add it to another one, or if there's pieces of this that we should retain while other pieces end up someplace else, that's fine too. Anything else about 1.5? Moving on to 1.6. Determine venues and personas that content will be created for and delivered to. The question I have about this one is, do we need to do this before we do 1.4? Yeah, my personal feeling is this is going to come We'll need to think about it, but the actual execution is going to come later in the plan. Yeah. We're not going to say we're going to KubeCon and then write some training. Well, that's what I did, and it worked out just fine. Uh, so, I mean, I would say KubeCon's the best one for security um, just because there are more developers there. I think for more context setting, OSS is great. Now, scale and FOSTM, FOSTM more, more so are useful, but I literally would prioritize right now for a lot of this training KubeCon. It's just where the developers show up. Um, so, and like start small, make sure it works, and then try the other ones. <laughs> and we can even put that as the key steps milestone, stating this is our list, this is how we're going to pilot it, this is where we would uh, adjust, and then expand yeah it's like cubecon c-u-b-e-con mm -hmm. k-u-b-e-con k-u-b-e thank you For the kubernetes david hey man it's I an open hybrid kind of, world baby i have so many letters flowing through my brain right now i apologize <laughs> judy has her hand up Actually, I took it down again because I had skipped on to 1.7, 1.8. I was, I'm finding it hard ahead. to look ahead when all I can see is curate and collect content because I think a lot of this would be decided when we decide on our matrix and collecting content. Mm -hmm. Well, I get fair. you want to go through them, but it's, yeah, I think I'm sure that yeah, our scope is correct. Two months, we will be in a better position to decide on these. Yeah. I hope and that's going to go to one of the next <laughs> questions around prioritization. You know, where do we need to start? I think we've gotten some of those answers already, but you're right. Yeah. All right, moving on to 1.7, create a unified approach to delivering certification and badging, no matter where such training has been delivered, building upon the existing Linux Foundation certification infrastructure. Again, I know that we've talked a lot about badging in, in a couple different contexts. Is this something that belongs to this yeah. group? I think this belongs to three. This sounds way more like rewards and incentivizations to me. Yeah, it does. So it needs to be done, but I mean, badging and certs are all, all about incentives as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Give it to me. I got it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and by, I, just FYI, uh, wherever this lands, um, I know a number of the folks within the LF, uh, you know, certain training, so happy to make any introductions if anybody wants that. Uh, they're, they're, they, they, they love to, uh, they love to get their stuff used. <laughs> David, you may also want to put a plug in. They're welcome to come here and participate too. Oh, um, <laughs> that's a, you know what, that's a great point. Um, yeah, about that. <laughs> it's a good idea. We should set up a brainstorming session, but yeah. uh, we've got we got to get through the goals first. <laughs> um, so okay, so the badging goes to section three, so we don't need to cover it, and then 
goal eight. Goal eight is develop in-person educator-led variations of training materials, such as with hands-on lab work, and go to conferences to encourage training. Isn't that really the second group? Yeah, I would give it to the second group because I'm not leading the second group, <laughs> and so I don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not protesting oh, the task. Just we, I want to try to put things in the right buckets. No, I think that's right. I agree. But nine no, is. I'm sorry, that's oh, go Sal. No, please finish. I was just saying nine is definitely this group, though. Wait, yes. nine is this group. I, I think an aspect of eight might be this group as well. We are collecting. Um, oh, I'm sure we're collecting curate content, not necessarily create content. Yeah, we're not creating the content yep. and the same for nine actually if we're not creating it it doesn't make any sense but well, as we as we have the inventory we can suggest this is a priority this should get fast tracked for localization potentially right okay so what i would say is this group should help identify what are the needs for localization and then I would think the other group, but we, we want the folks who are involved in generating content to also be involved, at least indirectly in the localization. Uh, that does raise an issue, and I, I'm frankly useless on this. Uh, I, I, I'm basically only an English speaker. I, I learned enough French to, to read some things, but I'm terrible at it. Um, so, we probably ought to try to collect and curate things that are not in English. And I don't yeah. know. Okay, so I mean, most CNCF kind of solved this problem in a way that I like. Um, oh. So uh, most developer resources are in English, but right, I give talks in Spanish too. And like sometimes stuff like supply chain is really hard to translate. So CNCF has their own cloud computing, uh, like multilingual, uh, repository. It's just on GitHub and you have a Slack associated with it as well. So you've got multiple language speakers, you all agree on some translation and then you put it in. Um, uh -oh. So that could be, yeah, so it should be open sourced and it allows it to be like sort of intrinsically, it's, I mean, it's going to tell you who's looking at the documentation. So you don't have any questions about what language should be prioritized. And then it makes sure that they agree on that language, um, which is incredibly important. So I love it. Yeah. Let me go. I'll find the link to it real quick. Um, but it's so useful. Yeah, we, we did a limited of that with the best practices badge, but because the list, the, the list of, of requirements is so much shorter, it wasn't the same level of challenge. Thank you for that, uh, Sal. So does this belong in this group? Does a portion of this belong in this group? If so, let's refine it and make sure that what we're not taking on is owned by somebody else. So I would suggest uh, cloning one nine and bobbing that over to Glenn in group two. And then we can adjust one nine to be, um, maybe I identify or prioritize uh, existing content for localization. Okay, so you, you know what? There's a recent work within the um, uh, uh, OpenSSF to start creating a glossary. So that might also be the, oh wait, we should have ways to translate those terms. Oops. Anything else around one nine? Last but not least, let's jump to one ten, which is identify areas where developers are copying or extracting insecure code snippets and work to correct the most widely applied vulnerable snippets in order to address common problems and challenges such as those found on Stack Overflow. Provide justification and reasoning on the change to support educating adopters of snippets and ensure that proposed text is properly licensed as OSS. 
such as MIT, not just CC license because they don't address patents. Build on existing research in this area. This is not an insignificant goal. Uh, Eric. So being that this is more about potentially curating material and, and other components, is, is it on this group to actually identify and, and potentially fix the snippets versus working with Alpha Omega and other groups to help educate and document uh, some of the reality of what uh, the vulnerabilities were and, and make it more transparent to people. Um, I, I'm asking because is is our this charter to actually work on and fix or remediate problems or is it more to educate people? I'm not sure Crobe and David both have your hands up. I'm not sure who was first. I'll let you go Crobe. Um, maybe we adjust this to be identify patterns of how, where developers are doing this behavior and potentially identify, uh, identify or suggest that guidance is created. That, would that be a better alternative path for us? No. <laughs> <laughs> then I yield the floor to Dr. Wheeler. Ah, okay. Yeah, so this is, um, there's actually been several papers in this area. If you, um, I'll have to direct them up because uh, they are, are eye opening papers. This is not about fixing a program, which is really where Alpha Omega is going to. If you go back and say, where, you know, I keep seeing the same vulnerability across hundreds of unrelated programs. And the answer is almost always it's the top answer in Stack Overflow. So a vast number of programmers, how do they write programs? They type into Google what code they want. They look for the top answer in Stack Overflow, copy, paste, we're done now. Um, you can complain about it. You can say they shouldn't do it that way, but they'll keep doing it. Um, so th this is a problem, but this isn't really an Alpha Omega problem because Alpha Omega is focusing on projects. I mean, they could, I yeah. guess, but at least, at least right now, that's not their scope. I don't know if this group is the right scope, but I think this is a problem that needs resolving somehow. I mean, this has to stay in. This is literally like the most important thing to be on these goals right now. And this is year two, right? So we have time to put this in yes. place. What you're talking about is the cognitive engineering of open source, which is my favorite thing. So this has to stay in because of that, but also it's absolutely necessary, right? So there are information right. processing for Stack Overflow. That's great. That's going to be the resource. I don't want to remove that, but we have to embed an awareness of vulnerabilities into that platform. If we're going to use that platform globally, and we have to embed security information into it. It still has to be in the decision point of the developer. So this is absolutely necessary. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 my only, my, I, I totally agree with you. This work is absolutely necessary. My only question is whether or not it's this particular group. But if, if, if we say that it's not this group, we need to make sure it goes somewhere where it's going to be acted on. Yeah, and I agree. That was my point. Is is this the right group for it or not? I, I would also point out that the problem is now much bigger with Copilot. Oh yeah. And I think that that's something that warrants consideration because that's like a machine at this point. Well, it's not just like a machine. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, the it literally is a machine. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole separate discussion. And honestly, like that's one that needs to be brought up internal, like internally to the AI uh, subgroup. Um, we really genuinely, like this is a side topic, but we need a license for that. OSI is already considering a license for that. That space is just not, we do not have laws set up for that kind of development and style. <laughs> um, but even with that, you know, Stack Overflow is where people people specifically are making their decision points. So we need to put that cognitive information where it's being used. Yeah. Okay. So if, if does the first part of this goal stay here and the second part gets moved elsewhere? So can we move the, can we, if I can build a rewards and incentives part around the licensing, I think that would be really valuable. 
Um, or maybe it moves into active education because that's really super necessary. Let's actually move that into active education, right? Because the end goal in embedding this would be year two. If in year one, we can get awareness of it and people will be more responsive. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine with moving the, into the other group because the other group is focusing on execution. And, mm -hmm. and really, I don't think it would be sensible to separate the I'm going to look for the snippets from the fix. Once you find the snippet, you've done half the work at least. Wait, I actually, I do disagree on this. I think that oh. the first part of this goal should stay in this subgroup specifically um, because I think it really, it's like we, I would like to move the model closer to real time when we're talking about cybersecurity because cybersecurity is real time. So I'd love that to be considered information, right? We're providing and surfacing information in this subgroup. And I think that this first part of this goal is that in like the most truest form. As a quick question, if I could, has, I've not seen evidence of Stack Overflow trying to really address this themselves. Have they tried to do any sort of awareness campaign on their own amongst their user groups? Ooh, I don't know. I can reach out and try to find out. I can check out through the new stack and see if they want to ask them about it. Uh, it'd be interesting to know, right? Because it's like if, if the problem, you know, uh, essentially is at their front door and uh, they've not done anything to try and at least build some awareness about it um, themselves, it might motivate them to take a first step while we try and figure out what else we might do to support it. Good idea. Judy? Oh, yeah, I, I just asked a question in the group. I'm I'm trying to get my head around the Stack Overflow problem. It's like whack-a-mole. Um, and I don't think it's the root of the problem. What's the act? Like, that's, that's a symptom of the actual problem. People taking code that they're not aware of that it may cause security problems. Like, how can we actually address the root of the problem, which is for us collecting and curating information? I I was trying to map it to the most weaknesses, the top twenty five or the OS top ten, uh, and try and educate people in those areas so that if they are copying code, that they would be familiar with the weaknesses that are. I don't know. My, my thought process is <laughs> a little bit confused. Um, so, I mean, this is how I would see this executing. So in this first year, if we focus around context setting first, which is what people basically need, like I have, I've worked with maintainers of major projects. I've gotten them to install the best security uh, practices. And then they often remove them because they find that the labor is too much, the labor to maintain an awareness, right? Because the day-to-day -day of a developer, if they're spending an hour even on just reading up on vulnerabilities, they're not able to do their jobs that they enjoy. <laughs> a very specific type of person likes to be InfoSec, and that's really the problem here. Um, so we can do contact setting, we can do solutions available, and that's just generally how do you solve these problems, and we can do basic tooling that's ready. And if we can backlink the vulnerabilities to that, then anyone would be able to extract exactly the content that they need, right? We'll build a database that says, we understand generally this vulnerability class, the tooling and the context and the solution. You can look into any of those toolings as you would like to. I'd like to see that. So we would be able to reach out to Stack Overflow with an offer of embedding an additional backend that provides that contact, like educational context in the moment when a developer needs it. And they'll be able to have that to execute on. That's my dream of dreams. I don't think David. that's going to lead to success. Yeah. Um, I do agree that we need to educate the developer. I, I think we need to educate all developers. But thinking of Stack Overflow as the problem, no, no, no. You ask a developer, what is Stack Overflow? The answer is it's the collection of solutions. Mm -hmm. So saying, hey, I, I, I'm gonna I would argue also that's also evolving. Because now, as I said, like, you'd be surprised what Copilot can do in JavaScript, at least. Sure, sure. But, but I'm, I, I, let me, uh, but, but, but I, I, I'm, I don't think what I'm going to say is any different for Copilot either. 
if the if the solution is read copilot you know go to the solution on stack overflow or copilot and then separately do some research to see if it suggested the, uh, a good answer um everybody's going to do step one and never step two so Wait, that's true the there's automation there's automated tooling for this <laughs> Like yes, people yes. To use the tools. <laughs> yes, but the problem is if the automated tools give them the wrong answers, mm. that's the problem here. And the solution is to try to find the worst wrong answers and get and stop that. <laughs> mm. Not, hey, here's the wrong answer, but if you do some special research, you'll find out it's the wrong answer. 99 of 100 will not do step two. Mm. They have working code. They're already moved on. True, true. So, so I mean, that's not to say education's bad. Education, good. But um, it, it, this is the issue of they're extracting code and repeatedly reinserting it because they, we, they keep getting the wrong answers. Mm. So in those cases, let's identify the top wrong answers and go fix that. And well, I, I mean, do agree that we need to modify this beyond Stack Overflow and add at least um, Copilot. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're speaking to the central tenet of cybersecurity, right? It's like trust, but verify. And how do we provide the right information to the developer to actually verify? That's, that's something that we really should be thinking about as we start to engineer the database behind this. Uh, fair, fair enough, but I, don't, I, I, I am skeptical that you're going to get a developer. The developer is going to say, I already verified. It's on Stack Overflow. That's mm -hmm. the top answer. Hundreds of other people have voted on this as the top answer. They already verified it. So how do we, <laughs> so how in this case, how do you visualize uh, the end outcome of an integration with Stack Overflow? Because I would, I would literally label directly under a known vulnerability snippet, known vulnerability with a tag tagged to the CVE. Um, and I, okay, I think that's, that's, that's not how Stack Overflow works. I, it, no, right not now. at this, <laughs> not at this time. No. Yeah. yeah I, I, if I, if yeah. I may, yeah, if I may, ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, I think this is an excellent conversation, but I think we're yeah, switching we'll a, a little much here uh, right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and I think this this could definitely be a topic we we dive much deeper into uh, in, in the future. Uh, but let me get back to the, uh, the the question at hand here, as far as how to handle this goal. This is uh, still a year two goal. As identified, there was a um, suggestion to keep the first part of the goal in this group, which I've got highlighted on the screen, identify areas where developers are copying or extracting code snippets, work to correct the most widely applied vulnerable snippets in order to address common problems and challenges, such as those found on Stack Overflow. Mm -hmm. And then we would we would take the second part of this and, and um, move it to a more appropriate group. Can I, I still think? Can, ahead, I, uh, can I subset that further? I yes, would say may. identify the systems where developers are copying, extracting the insecure code from, and then stop there. And the rest of that is execution. So basically, we just had an awesome conversation that I hadn't thought that hard about, but you're absolutely right. It's more than Stack Overflow. Copilot's going to, I think, roar right in. And, and then potentially the second section gets transformed to, into what Judy suggested in the chat, provide a better solution for secure code snippets as a, a goal statement, and then we can feed in specifics to wherever that lands. Yeah, I, I, I would not be surprised if we're going to have execution in the second group that this really is a, a second group. And if, this is an execution problem, not just a you know, identify what's out there problem. So, but hopefully we all agree that there's there is an issue here that needs resolving somehow. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and your your point was right on, Dave. I was gonna bring that up because I think the work to correct piece of this we needed to remove. So, the current proposal, if you look in the the uh, agenda doc, you'll see it. First part will keep identify the systems where developers are copying or extracting insecure code snippets. End of line. That's the, we'll keep that here in our group. And then the remainder of it has been consolidated into provide a better solution for correcting code snippets. And that will go to, I guess, likely group two. Can we change it to systems where? Because where might meet, might suggest which URLs 
uh, you know, for, you know, a list all the top answers that are a problem, and I don't think we're trying to do that here. Uh, if you'd like to type into the document and, and make your suggestion, oh, okay, that, that, uh, that's absolutely acceptable. <laughs> okay. I saw a number of thumbs up when I was just talking. Does anyone else have any feedback? On this while David goes ahead and makes his tweak. Oh, good. Oh, somebody already added system. Yep, that's. I, I thought I grabbed what you said when when you made the statement. So hopefully that uh, yeah that covers what you're trying to say. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I don't. I, I hate to lose the uh, uh, co-pilot. Better. I may not have capitalized that correctly. All right. Is everybody, okay. is everybody okay with that statement? Mm -hmm. Okay. Glenn's going to hate me after this meeting, so I'm going to give him a. <laughs> All right. We have just under 10 minutes left. Uh, Krobe. So, so now that we've gone through and kind of pruned the goals a little bit, and we'll have a proposal, we'll show a kind of a final proposal to everybody later uh, does anyone have any initial thoughts of other areas we gaps we have for identifying or curating content you think this is our good exhaust this is the complete list and we're we're good that's good we will we will take i'm pretty happy with it excellent good thank you everybody. all right um, there was one point I did want to touch on before we wrap this up. So I will go through and start making some changes in the Git based upon what we talked about today. I will have a conversation with my, my good friend, Glenn, about all the cool stuff that uh, we're offering him as an opportunity to look at in his group. I'm expecting we may get some stuff back from the other groups as well, which is absolutely fine. We can work with that as it happens. Um, so two things left. The first one is the meeting on September 15th, uh, which is OSS EU week. Uh, it, I, I think the right thing to do is probably cancel this meeting, um, but I wanted to pose it to the group uh, and, and see what your thoughts were. Well, who's going to be there? Who's going to be at OSS? I'm going to be there. Is anyone else going to be there? We can do a live meeting around this and also share it. I added a note of I won't be available last week, Dave, already to the documents. Um, Thank you, Judy. Actually giving a speech that day. Well, okay. I was wondering. It would be like four in the morning for all you. Wait, so I've been wondering about this. So I never saw the CFP come out for this, but like, can we absolutely talk about this on OSSF day? Um. They just released the docket of speakers for OpenSSF Day. They have a couple sections I don't think they've defined yet, like breakout sessions. Cool. So we probably could petition for that. Let's do a breakout session on this. That seems like that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Um, we'll have to talk to Khalil and Jory today about if there's any opportunity there on that. Excellent. Cool. Let, let me know, because I definitely would like to cover this. So for those of us who are not going to be there, unfortunately, um, should we cancel this meeting? I'll have a pint for you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Have two. It's going to be a, it's going to be a busy day. <laughs> I, I can just tell already it's going to be one of those days. You should have two. <laughs> I, I'm doing a keynote five minutes after Linus Torvalds. Yeah. So Linus is my opening you. act. That's so cool. <laughs> you, you're, you're likely to have some uh, more people there, though, Crow. All right, so I'm going to cancel this meeting for the 15th then. Excellent. Okay. But we might do a breakout session on it, so we'll be more eyes on it. That'd be great. Uh, I think that's, that's absolutely uh, a, a good idea. Um, the next thing I wanted to touch on before we wrap it up for today is homework and next steps. 
uh, I will go through and make the adjustments in the, uh, the Git based on our feedback. What else should we, so we're gonna have four ways between meetings. What, uh, what other tasks do we think we're ready to take and start working on offline? Uh, Dave, uh, yes. this is David Wheeler. I mean, yes. we've got that Google Doc that attempts to start at a list. I realize it's pretty immature, but would would it be a good thing to convert it to uh, Markdown on GitHub and then start trying to get people to add to it, or what's the um, part I, implementing it, goal one one? I we are we've already done that. Um, I think we're talking about the same thing. So. Oh, here's the here's the link. I'll throw it in the chat. Please. Um, where the heck is my chat? I, I chat. only knew of the Google Doc, so there we go. Oh wow, lots of stuff in chat. Hope I didn't miss anything in chat. Guys. Yeah, we, we converted it to Markdown, David. So we can um, once let's let Mr. Rousseau uh, adjust based off of our call today. But then oh. afterwards, we are free to start submitting PRs uh, for uh, adjustments. Oh no, that's not the document I meant. I meant the the, the Google Doc uh, that tried to list existing materials. Here, let yes, me, uh, to the chat there, yeah. So yeah, I will go ahead. I can take that on and just I will literally take that Google Doc and Markdown transfer it and just create a sub Markdown that says what do we want to call it yeah. when it's called already existing materials. Sure. It's cool. very. That actually already is a Git oh. repo. Oh, a really? Git file. Wow. I'll show you in a second. Awesome. Thank you for doing that, Sal. I appreciate it. Anyways, there's a summary, expand training. <gasps> da, da, da. All righty. Nice. Well done. Look at that magic. We love open source. I think Dr. Wheeler forgot he already did that. No, 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 no. This, this is guidelines. These are education materials, are they? No, this, just, these are, no, this is the giant list we worked on forever. Yeah, yeah the I, new document, the new existing, it's like a complete brain dump. It really does. I don't think yeah. it's ready for Markdown, David Wheeler. Yes, it's complete brain dump of yes, it is. existing training <laughs> material that's out there. Oh, 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 the training. You know that, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah. Right, I, and I, I did I did mark that uh, it, when I commented about it. It is absolutely rough, rough, rough. Stick, well, stick do you think there's in something the chat again. There. I'll take a look at it and see if there's anything that does need transferring over to these existing guidelines. So we'll just give it a review. Well, wait, 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 wait. There, there, those are totally different things. That okay. what, what Crow <laughs> said, what Crow pointed out was existing guidelines. But I thought what we were trying to do is list as existing educational materials, which are not the same thing. So doesn't it just make sense to put it in this docs file, though? No, I don't think so. Okay. Most guidelines assume you understand the material more or less. No, 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 not not on this readme oh. document. Just just in this document file, I can create a new markdown file for education materials, and I can I can sort of reformat it a little bit. Would uh, this be a good spot? So would we prefer to, I, I think I see both points here. At this point, based on the, the information and, and the fact that it is a brain dump in the Google document that we're talking about, listing the educational materials, would we prefer to continue to work in that document for the moment until we got the majority of the information, then convert it into Markdown? Or would Sweet. we prefer to convert it into Markdown now and then use PRs to, to update it? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. It's it's easier to work in those docs. Plus, we can just do like a weekly like dump on a GitHub after you format a little bit. That's it. Yeah, I'm a plus one to leaving it in GDoc because it's just I easy agree. for collaboration. Really fast brain dump stuff, and we can review together. Maybe I think our first step would be maybe to structure so people know where to dump different types of information because at the moment there is no structure to that doc. So maybe That's we correct. could structure it into what we decide in how we're going to um, collect information. So if it's, I don't know. Right. I have, I, I, I have a full brain dump of LinkedIn stuff there, but it's covering everything in one area. Maybe, you know, we could have areas to decide to, how are we going to <laughs> divide this I, content I, up? <laughs> David, I still have the settings for the conversion we did, so we can always confuse that 
keep expanding to that to convert to Markdown. Yeah. Right. So that all of our Markdown documents are like the same. Exactly. Just a stable release kind of like cadence. Let's just do this like, well, if this is once every month, we just update the GitHub once every month. All right. So everyone's homework for next time. Uh, additionally, aside from adding PRs to the goals and such, once I get them updated, continue to use the Google Doc for the educational materials, add additional materials in there. If you have ideas on how to organize and structure those, please put those in that document as well. Uh, and we will review that the next time we meet. Cool. All right. That and that is content hour. which is not uh, currently being donated to the foundation, right? It's it's Red Hat or Intel based um, content, which is linked, right? Okay. We're just trying to, to get as much information together for this sort of materials as we possibly can at this point. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, thanks so much, everyone. This was uh, this was great. Glad we're finally rolling on this. If uh, anyone needs anything, you know how to get in touch with Crow or myself or anybody else on the group. The emails are listed in your uh, your sign-ins. Have a good rest of the day. Awesome. Thank you. Ooh, thank you. Thank you.